Welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge free life drawing class brought to you by Lightbox Expo and Schoolism.com. Today's stream is all about, um, it's all about squirrels. Today's class is all about squirrels. And do I have something nuts to tell you all? <laughs> it's my amazing guest, the one and only Dave Zaboski. Uh, you may know his stuff because you may have watched something like Beauty and the Beast or Aladdin or Hercules or Pocahontas or Fantasia 2000 or the list goes on, but I will not do that because we only have 90 minutes, okay? So, uh, Dave, you are on the right side because I figured you're a righty. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then I will draw yep. on the left side. And for everybody out there, you can join in and hang out, chat with us, whatever, ask questions live through the Lightbox Expo Discord, which you can see the address at the bottom of the screen, or you can um, type in an, a question into Slido. And uh, I believe, Patricia, if you're still there, you, you're going to be taking care of the Slido questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> okay, perfect. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So here's the first one. It's going to be, or sorry, this isn't actually the first image. I tricked you all if you all starting. Um, okay, so it's going to be five one-minute drawings, five two-minute drawings, five five-minute drawings, and then five ten-minute drawings, and then you're done, everybody. You're done, okay? So here we go. L listen for the chime, and... Uh, yeah, here we go. Jeez, uh, it was just working. Darn it all. Did we hear that one? No, was that just in my head? Dave, did you hear the chime? Can anybody hear me? <laughs> okay. All right. It's, I don't know. It seems like maybe there's something wrong with the audio. Where are you, Dave? Oh. Hmm. Okay, so can you Man, I Oh, okay. I see what's going on here. Can you guys hear me now? My goodness. Okay, so I guess uh, everybody on YouTube, um, you guys could hear me. So I guess this will just be a little quiet <laughs> kind of thing here, I guess. I can't seem to get my audio to work. Input device, audio. Output. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, jeez.
Okay, is this working anymore? It's working now? I think maybe I was on push to talk. Can anybody hear me? No. Voice activity. Oh, you can hear me, but I can't hear you guys. Okay, well, um, I just missed the last bunch of drawings. Dave, do you want to maybe, uh, we'll mute on Discord and let's hop back on Zoom. And Patricia, you have the link to Zoom, so maybe you can join in on Zoom with us. Bobby, I'm. See you later. See you later. I'm on. Oh wait, I hear, oh, wait, I, I hear, hear you now. I hear you now. You hear me? Oh, you did. <laughs> so Bobby, I'm, 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 I'm muted on Discord oh, and yeah. on on Zoom. I don't know. He's gone again. I will hop into Zoom just in case. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I think what I'm doing is I'm hearing your, um, no, your Discord. Yes. Which is fine. Okay, great. <laughs> so finally, I'm going to get started on a drawing. Even this morning, there was an stream on Discord, and there was a lot of problems. So I think today it's just Discord of Tinder. Just let everybody know that we can hear them on Discord. Just <laughs> they can't. They can't hear us on Discord, or can they? Uh. I'm muted on Discord, but not muted with you on Zoom. Yeah, I can, I can hear Discord through your computer. I think that's what's going on. Oh, right. But it's okay. We could just leave it like that, and they could talk and whatever else. Okay, so I'm finally drawing. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm trying to draw on a hidden <laughs> layer. That's the problem. Okay. Are they talking on Discord then, or do we know? So I've asked Patricia to join us. Um, let me switch. Uh, okay, here's the first two-minute drawings now. Two-minute drawings. Uh, I asked Patricia to join us so that she can uh, relay any questions or whatnot. Um, thank you, Patricia. You're the, you're the best, honestly. Of course, baby. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What is that's like one of those Indian okay. rainbow squirrels or something like that, right? Yeah, these these squirrels are gigantic. Are um, they really? They are gigantic? absolutely massive. They're like small dogs. This this looks like one of your drawings. I know. Well, that's the pictures? secret. You just gotta find good pictures and copy those and give them to the director. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Um. You know, the one of the last projects I did before the the uh, pandemic mm -hmm. was a mm -hmm. children's book called The Squirrel Manifesto. Oh. <laughs> so I, I actually did a children's book on, on squirrels. How perfect is that? Right? Yeah, I know. I was really excited about that. Yeah, so apparently there's some maybe there's some issues with discord uh this morning with some people and, okay. and that's me so apologies everybody 
That's why it's so good to have you on here, Dave, so that people can still see you drawing as I try to figure things out. Yeah, nice. Um, uh, hey, the, the, how do I make the, um, all the brush types show up? It kind of disappeared. Oh, are you still selected on the brush tool? Yeah, let's see. The, oh, there it is. Got it. I was on a pencil tool. Yeah, that's why. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, so there we go. I caught up to the first two-minute sketch. We're going to start the second two-minute drawing. Okay, listen for the chime if you want to be totally, totally within two minutes. Otherwise, you could just start drawing. Also, everybody, I want to just let you know that whatever you do right now and so far, it's okay if it's not a masterpiece. This isn't what it's about, right? We're, we're doing this just to practice. And a lot of times, we don't even show a lot of the stuff that we do in life drawing, right? Because it's really just, it's kind of like an exercise for many of us artists. I noticed that a lot of people are uh, enjoying these squirrels, like in the YouTube chat. Oh, like <laughs> this is right. So cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. I was so excited to do this subject because, honestly, like I love squirrels. They're so much fun. They're so interesting. And I noticed a question. Um, they're asking, "What tools are you guys using?" <laughs> ah, I am using a default brush, just the plain old default brush. Dave? Yeah, I'm using, I'm just using soft pencil. It's the same thing that I would use if I were in a sketchbook. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, while we um, wind down on this, this uh, pose here, maybe you could talk a little bit about, I, I don't know, I should have talked to you about this before, but hey, like man, all your, of it's open. What do you got? <laughs> your Lytro life drawing sessions that you do. Oh yeah. Um. So can can the folks hear me on Discord? Uh, if you unmute on your Discord as well. Oh, cool. All right. I yeah, then that. they could hear you on there too. Oh. But they can't hear me. Just to let you know. Okay. Oh, got it. That's where the TikTok is happening too. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, we do uh, we do a live model drawing class on um, on Mondays from four to seven p.m. Pacific, and we have costume models and live music in my studio. It's, it's kind of tricky with the pandemic to um, to bring a bunch of people into the studio, but um, but uh, yeah, we do uh, uh, a Monday night free. Uh, three-hour drawing session and much like this where there's like a um, we start with with short poses but we also end with like an hour-long pose so you can get the colors out I've been doing some little oil sketches recently it's pretty exciting <laughs> try to do an oil sketch and you know yeah well you you're doing um, longer poses too so that's really cool there's definitely been the want to do some longer poses um, in yeah. the comments and such. So can we give any direction on how to get to the um, light drawing thing? Yeah, you know, it, you can um, you can go to uh, Lytro, L-A-E, Lytro is our, uh, is our company of, of illustrators mm -hmm. and creatives. And uh, you can go to um, Lytro. Uh, well, actually you can go on Instagram, to our Instagram, um, L-A-E-T-R-O underscore and then on on uh, Mondays you'll have a um, uh, Mondays and Sundays we'll have a little link to it um, in the in the uh, link in the link tree. Awesome, and uh, just to kind of sell it a bit more for you, Dave. Like everybody, Dave will be there to draw with you. You know, and like this, it makes a big difference when you're drawing with a professional. I know it has for me in my life. Mm. 
Yeah, I'll say like the the best advances that I ever made in drawing is standing behind another amazing artist looking over their shoulder. I think it's really exciting in in our time now to have you know schoolism and, and places where where you don't have to get into Disney to be able to stand behind Aaron Blaze or Bobby Chu or you know some of these amazing artists. You know, we can do it online now. And I think that that is super exciting. Hey, thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so on, on ours, we do, um, you know, I'll do little tutorials and little um, uh, demonstrations. Uh, you know, there's discussion and sharing in the class. And then again, it's like, um, yeah, I've got some of my friends come over and there's live music and um, you guys do like word. poetry as well or something yeah right? there's yeah spoken word and stuff like you know I I think I'll tell you um, I just refound this book I don't know if you're familiar with this Bobby this book called The Art Spirit by Robert Henry yes right when I book. got hired at Disney I got I got I was in a kind of project runway sort of internship program and um, and they were hiring like three people a year and I got one of the spots and my first week in my cubicle that I shared with two other artists my first week I found on my on my my seat this book the art spirit I think that Walt Stanchfield left it for us um, I don't you know it's that's amazing ever. what a <laughs> sentence that is Walt Stansfield right? left this for me. Jeez. Right. And so I, I felt like if somebody went to the effort to put this on my desk, I should have a look at it. And so uh, if you're not familiar, it's, it's Robert Henry, uh, H-E-N-R-I. And the book is called The Art Spirit. And man, I, and I'm taking another spin through it. I, can I... Can I, so that's where the like spoken word stuff comes from because there's like things that I think are so inspiring. Can I read this little yeah, first, sure. first paragraph of the first page? Um, I'll, I'll wait for the ding here. We'll, I'll do it on the next post. Okay. Oh, you went for the ears over there, didn't you? I'm trying to spice it up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Oops, there we go. All right, it goes like this. Art, when really understood, is the province of every human being. It is simply a question of doing things, anything, well. It is not an outside extra thing. When the artist is alive in any person, whatever his kind of work may be, he becomes an inventive, searching, daring, self-expressive creature. He becomes interesting to other people. He disturbs, upsets, enlightens, and he opens ways for a better understanding. Where, where those who are not artists are trying to close the book, he opens it, shows there are still more pages possible. Love it. Right? That's really and cool. For all y'all out there, th this was written in, you know, it was written in 1920. Um, so you can replace all of the he's with they's, she's, and whatever else that you want. You're all part of that, you know, cohort of creators. That's great. I love that. I love the sort of body language on this guy. Yes, and also, I know this is not a squirrel, okay? <laughs> I know there's going to be just some, like, know-it-all. Oops. Yeah. Some know-it-all uh, is going, ah, this was a squirrel day. Alan, but Alan. you know what day it is, right? You know what day it is. It's Groundhog's Day. Exactly. Exactly. So this all of a sudden becomes very fitting. Yeah, it's... um. It's it's two twenty two. Yeah, isn't that weird? There's so many twos. Two twenty two. Yeah, I've got a meeting at two o'clock today. The people on the meeting are so excited about it. <sighs> okay, five seconds left. Oh my goodness. Last time I was uh, forgetting to turn on the timer. So this time I just made one giant long video. Now I know this is not a squirrel as well, 
okay? <laughs> Everybody, this is a chipmunk. I know this. But look at the chipmunk. I mean, come on, you're come in the ballpark. On. You gonna kick out this chipmunk? Really? <laughs> I can't kick out this chipmunk. I love doing this stuff so much. I love that this is our job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like how it's also important to be studying from life this way, you know, like I, I often recommend to my students, like if you have a good sketchbook, have one page that's, you know, if you want to do imaginative stuff, have one page that's imaginative, but one page that's from life. Like, that's what I really love about your work, Bobby, is that that you you have an understanding of the values like you're not afraid to go dark on like dark values on things that really give it atmosphere oh thank you my friend um, and I think you get that from doing these kinds of studies yeah well I used to teach life drawing in college um, before mm -hmm. I started my studio so it, it's a big passion of mine for sure yeah, me too. I think that life drawing is like the creative cauldron. It's like that. It's that the source. Place where it's the source of it all. Yeah, it's the source of it all. It's the best kept secret in our profession, man. Bankers don't get to go draw beautiful, costumed or nude people. It's like there's this. I you know I kind of feel like without being super dramatic about it, but even maybe being a little dramatic, like this is a practice that we can probably trace, it goes back 2,500 years, mm. right? Like the, the Greeks, we don't have any papyrus from them with drawings on them, but man, how did they get those statues without it? Right. And then we know- And all the sure. way back then, you know, like how did they do that all the way back then? It's incredible. Right? Like there were people just like us, not sitting there digitally, but sitting there, you know, in real life, studying whatever they could study. Mm -hmm. You know, the studying the human form. They'd have people stand for them and they would be able to study the, the human form. And like that goes back 2,500 years to the Greeks. And we have actual records of, of it going back to at least. Um, 1470 now but wasn't there it, I like I find it very fascinating because like wasn't there a period of time where the knowledge from the Greek statues were lost it was lost yeah. for a while right people didn't didn't know how to kind of do that and until Donatello came around and made uh, his David wasn't that the thing right well, what? Yeah, that that was part of it. And my understanding was they also found, they also found this sculpture called the Lao Koan, um, which is was a Greek sculpture that that um, that got discovered, and they were just like, oh my God, how, you know, how did they make this? You know, and so there was all of this um, this 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 renewed study, which you know became the kind of renaissance. That's so cool. I particularly like the pieces where it's like this piece is connected with some other piece or some other period, right? Like they're saying something, um, mm. not just kind of, okay, I painted some fruit and that's what the piece is about you know painting some fruit like this fruit used to be this fruit appeared in this very controversial painting and that's why I'm taking this fruit now and putting it into this and, you know things like that right. I love that kind of stuff right right there's a famous story about a Manet painting because um, Manet was part of the Salon de Refusé you know the the early um, impressionist mm -hmm. but he was also a um, he was also a, uh, a sal he was a salon painter, so he got accepted into the, the big salons and everything, and he could see the sort of corruption happening in it. And so he painted this painting, 
that got accepted into the you know very stodgy um, uh, uh, collection, um, but it was a painting of the basically what he described as the asshole of a fish. And so like he did a still life with the fish on a platter and all of this stuff, but it was like the bottom of the fish, and so the whole kind of point of it was that he was he was sort of drawing this fish a hole to kind of take a shot at all of the um all of the stodgy that's so funny is that great and so it's pretty much like a joke on them kind of thing yeah yeah that's exactly now i wonder if that painting became like worth more over history because of that significance or or less but you know how can we know i don't know well it's a manet so it's pr pretty much no but okay so let me give you an example the banksy painting that was destroyed in at an auction right right like that destroyed version is m worth more than the intact version yeah. right because of the the situation because of that moment in history made it E worth even more actually so I wonder if it, it, the same thing happened with that um, mm, yeah, example possible. that you're saying people right? art is weird <laughs> right there's a question on Slido um for um, and, and a mention uh, from Anonymous. Um, Hi, Bobby. I just have two days of subscription for Schoolism, and uh, it's amazing. They're oh. really raving about it. Oh. And the question from them is how to study master artists. Yes. Uh, I love doing master studies. And the way that I do master studies is first, you know, you do the copying. But when you're copying, you try to get into the head of the artist like okay what did they paint first i could see all this these finished marks here but did they draw a line sketch first do i think that they did you know whether they did or not it'd be great if you could know but if you can't know you just guess right and you you try to go through the process and when you go through the process generally by the end of it you'll have some revelations and go oh yeah they probably actually didn't do this and they probably did this instead and then i methodically go through another copying kind of thing doing that right and so on and so forth until i feel quite familiar with it and i start to analyze and i start to go why did they choose this tone instead of this tone why would they do this instead of that you know this is supposed to look orange yet this is gray how did that happen? Why does it work? You know, and then when you start to figure things out, I literally try to paint the thing without looking at it. You know, and I go through that process of really struggling and trying to paint that thing without even looking at it. Same painting, everybody, same painting. Okay, and then from there, you know, I painted the thing so much, there's definitely aspects of it that I like and that I would want to bring into another painting or another idea. So I might be drawing a squirrel right now, but then I change it, the next version, into something else, a lizard perhaps, something totally different, right? And see if I can paint the same painting with a lizard there instead of a squirrel, and then start to get further and further away from the actual thing that I was studying, right? And try to go, how else can I change this? What can I do next time? Perhaps it's just the color scheme, totally different subject, totally different um, location, and everything. And I'm not just talking like how some of our art teachers talk, and they just talk, and they didn't do it. <laughs> I would love for everybody to check out you know, like my Instagram and just start going through the feed. And you'll start to notice these paintings, not all of them, but there's periodically there's these paintings that are of a green night, a green nighttime scene, right? And I didn't paint nighttime scenes with green until I studied um, Frederick Remington's Moonlight Wolf for a few months to the point where I could paint it 
without looking at it. And even though I only studied that one painting, look how much I got out of it. I think that's the huge difference between how I study an artist and how 99% of other people study artists. They kind of just study that painting one time and then that's it. Yeah, that's a great story. That Remington's nighttime paintings are mind boggling, right? Mind boggling. Like how yeah. would he do that without nighttime photography? Right. Right? And is he painting? He's not painting by candlelight. That's going to make all your colors weird. Boggles the mind. He just like observed. He just watched forever and ever. Took little notes. And then painted in the day, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so I stick on one thing until I got something out of it. And if I like what I got out of it, I will stay on that thing until I feel like I got most of what I can get out of it. And generally, when you really think about it, those first initial studies that one might do where we just study the thing one time, we copy it one time. How much percentage wise do you think you actually got out of that? Right? Probably maybe 10%. Maybe. If it's a hardcore epic painting, you know, probably like 6%, something like that. There, there were stories about uh, John Singer Sargent and his um, instructor who uh, who s would say that you should be able to paint the face without doing features for a week. Like imagine doing a head Love painting that. where you're just painting the head, so you're getting the great shapes, the gradations, the turn of this, this sort of spectral turn of from warm to cool um, as the as the, the cheek rounds but all of it like you don't do any features for a week mm. imagine like that level of study yeah well you know um, there's something there you know like uh, when I was my first animal that I really really investigated and really really understood how to draw was a mangrove monkey Right. Mm. And um, my mom at the time, she worked close to the zoo. And so I said, just drop me off and pick me up when you're done. Right. right, right. And then I'm forced to stay at the zoo for eight, nine hours. Mm, mm. And I would just make a beeline for the mangrove monkeys after like, you know, two weeks of being there. Uh, I wasn't interested in looking at any of the other animals. Mm. But the thing <laughs> that makes this story interesting is like, what was I drawing? For the first two weeks, I was just drawing three boxes, right? Mm. With a little string to attach them all, right? So one box is the direction and the general best size f to represent the head, and then one for the pelvis, one for the, the rib cage. Right. And it was just pages of boxes. And it's just garbage, right? And my mom is like, what'd you draw today? <laughs> I was like, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. Mm. Yeah, but that's how you get there. Yeah. Because that, that really helped me uh, understand their movements so much better. Right. Because, like, you know, as a student, just drawing a person is super difficult. Drawing a monkey moving around at the time, like, that was, like, darn near impossible right right well I think that that's I, I think what you're pointing to too is this opportunity for deeper study you know yes. um, I, I think that that what we're all learning here is how to start a drawing and uh, um, Robert Henry talks about this in the in the art spirit like even a week long painting is learning how to begin a painting. And in the animation and entertainment industry, we do, I, I, I you know, I, I love the short sketches, I, I love them. 
but sometimes we, I find, maybe have an inordinate um, emphasis on the quick sketch. And is there a, I don't know, an opportunity to go a little bit deeper? Yeah. Well, it seems like, uh, I'm just taking a wild guess in the dark, but it seems like you've had kind of both of these kind of experiences. Of course, quick sketches uh, in the animation industry, but I feel like at some point you've done also the long studies of like a few days or maybe even a month of like old school atelier kind of stuff. Right, right. Did you? Like, yeah, like paintings that take a, a semester to complete. Yeah. Yeah, that's completely different gears of thinking yeah yeah you know I also I also think there's something interesting to um, to think about the the pace like can you do a quick sketch and take a, a moment and go slow on a quick sketch to get the one sort of anchor place right you know mm. and and then go back to fast and then go back to slow like everything like everything can have a a little pace to it um, and not everything is the same pace not everything is super fast movement but there's you pick your spots and it becomes an exercise in seeing not in just mark making mm -hmm. I remember um, one of the first times hanging out with Craig Mullins he was uh, where on the top of this giant tower, it's beautiful, having lunch, amazing view. But he's just looking at this pocket uh, of the scenery out there, just like this blank little space of water, you know? And I'm like, what are you looking at? Do you see something there? And he's like, just that blue. Yeah, I'm just looking at that blue. <laughs> mm. I'm like, oh, mm. wow, I want to look at that blue. Because you're Craig Mullins saying that that blue is interesting. <laughs> Whatever you're finding interesting, I'm going to find interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was just um, what I, whatever we were talking about was boring. <laughs> Who knows? But I'm sure like everybody at that table was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I kind of see, yeah, the blue, the blue. Why that blue is so good, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think you know. I don't know. Part part of our part of our uh, ability comes from a kind of obsession sometimes. You know, like you were talking about yep. the painting that you studied. You know. Oh yeah. Like, why did you study that? Because those guys have answered. They've solved for the light in ways that we aspire to solve. And if they've got some solutions, I'll tell you. Here's a quick story. There's a thing. There's a thing called uh, art battles. Or it used to be a few years ago, and uh, and it was this like graffiti battle where artists would have 90 minutes to. Uh, yeah, this might sound familiar. They would have 90 minutes <laughs> to complete a four foot by five foot canvas in front of a crowd, and then the crowd would judge, you know, applauding who they liked the best, and um, and then whoever won the competition would go and compete in Europe and things like that. So it's called Art Battles. And I was like, wow, that that sounds amazing. And a buddy of mine won it. And I was like, you know, I don't know, typical artist thing, like, that guy? And he went to Europe and, you know, and I was like, I don't know, man, I bet, I bet I could, I bet I could win this. And so I went to the Getty and I went to all of my teachers at the Getty, right? They're all dead. They're all, you know, the 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 artist Delacroix and Da Vinci and Bouguereau and all of those amazing artists that you see at the Getty and I was and I and I did this little meditation I was like okay guys hey I want to win this competition called Art Battles what can you guys teach me that I need to know to be able to win this competition so I walked around the Getty and I had conversations with all the artists like Delacroix would do these um, uh, ink lines underneath so like he would do a pencil drawing and then he would ink the pencil drawing so that his painting wouldn't obscure the the pencil the the underdrawing right and so then he would do uh, so then I went to like 
um, uh, uh, um, I went to uh, Maxfield Parish and looked at his work. You know, he does these blue, deep ultramarine blue underpaintings. And then Da Vinci, who did like a yellow ochre underpainting. And uh, so I had, I took all these notes from all these artists and I came up with this system of doing a nice ink line on the canvas and then from there covering the whole thing over with oil paint. But like the yellow ochre or yellow oil paint from Da Vinci, the, the blue from Maxfield Parrish, the kind of uh, Lizarin crimson from Delacroix. And so you have this kind of multicolored uh, underpainting and then I would rub it out. So I would kind of do an underpainting. and. Uh, and then, um, you know, create an image using oil paints on stage uh, from lessons that I learned from all of the, the conversations I was having with the masters. Um, There's like 5,000 people at this event in downtown LA, and, and I won. Awesome. In front of everybody. That must have been quite the uh, adrenaline rush compared to everyday normal life, you know? <laughs> It's all quiet and stuff. Nobody applauding when you finish a drawing. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was it was it was pretty funny because you're in the round. Your painting is at ninety degrees to the person next to you, so you can't really see what they're doing. Um, and uh, and I was there to test a theory based on my study of these artists, and. Uh, and so I didn't have a lot of expectations. There were, I had to do four rounds because there was like uh, all of the, the, you know, the newcomers, the, the wannabes, and then there were the champions. And so you had to get to the champions round and win that one to win to go to Europe. And, um, and so I don't know, I had like four rounds to go. And, um, and it was kind of ridiculous because people would cheer for you. I never, like, I never had a place where I would make a line and people would go, yeah, oh, did you see that line? It was just like totally surreal, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and then when at the end, you know, they would applaud for what ones they liked and it's just, yeah, it was, uh, it was fun too because there was some camaraderie, you know, we all knew that this thing we were up to was pretty absurd. And so, you know, even, you know, you'd meet at the corner of your painting with somebody and you'd be like, Dude, can you believe what we're doing right now? <laughs> so, so it was pretty fun. But it was a the, the kind of the moral is that this is that there's so much to glean from studying other other artists' work. Yes, and they most of our delight. like if knowledge was food, everybody's wasting their food and they're not finishing their meals. Generally, you know, um, it, me included. In the very beginning, I would just okay, I'm going to sketch everything out of this book or whatever. And then I do. And then, okay, I'm done. I did that thing. It's like, yeah, but you left 90% of the knowledge still in those pages. We have a question on Discord from M. Myers. Cool. If you guys can help us out uh, oh, with yeah. this question. Uh, hey Bobby and Dave and those are watching. Uh, I started landing my first character and concept design job last year and I have a question about community. With my most recent contract I found out that I would be the only designer on a project that has a large large budget with high expectation. Uh, his client is happy with the work that he's providing but he feels isolated in his design process and he works remotely and he doesn't have any artists around them to critique his work or bounce idea off. Uh, do you have any advice how to gain that perspective, inspiration and a creative team provides while working on an independent contractor? This was something we were talking about yesterday, Dave. Exactly. You know, like um, communication with the, with the client, um, finding a community as well, you know, like a this is a community and as well Lytro um, the company that Dave founded co-founded uh, it also has a big community of um, you know freelance artists yeah you know it is it is an ongoing conversation 
there is there are kind of two schools of thought and I'm I'm with I'm with the person asking the question one school of thought is artists are getting paid why would they need a community we don't need a community they're getting paid the second one is that's a you know, weird one <laughs> you know I yeah but I'll tell you in 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 Silicon Valley it's uh, it's a culture that that is that doesn't really care about culture mm -hmm. and and um, I think we need each other so I would suggest that you uh, if you don't have one start a group um, if you want to look into Lytro um, that's a place that that we're really you know with the the things becoming more and more remote and artists becoming more uh, free and more isolated at the same time um, how do we maintain a, a community now, when I was working at Disney I think one of the things that made Disney amazing wasn't that we did great work because I think we did but it was that we also did the work together and we built with each other like we were you know I was there for almost 10 years and um, and I worked on multiple projects with the same people. We got to know each other. And we got to know how to plus each other. And I think that it's super important for an artist to have an environment where they can trust their peers and be plused by them. Um, by plusing, I mean like to be additive. Can you, can you add to each other? And so I, you know, I, I would recommend you, um, make an effort to, to, to build or find a community that you can share that stuff with because I feel like it's super important. And as we get more and more into this remote and digital world, we're gonna find that we're maybe more isolated than we wanna be as artists. We're already pretty singular, you know, we're already pretty introverted. Totally. Uh, thank you, Dave. That's an amazing answer. <laughs> you know, uh, on that same topic, now, Lytro, it's not like you sign up and everybody gets accepted or anything, so it's not for everybody, but if you do feel like you're at a professional level, right, and you are interested in commercial illustration, so, you know, doing art for <clears throat> companies, other people, then I would suggest, you know, applying for Lytro and seeing if you get in because Lytro, essentially, Lytro is a community. It's all sorts of amazing things, but it's also a way to help artists and help companies find the jobs, find the people to do the jobs a lot easier, right? Essentially, that's that's what it is. Yeah, so, I mean, our, yeah, our, our sort of mandate is to help companies create and creators connect to companies like we help folks get get work in in industries that are not necessarily the entertainment industry which is also i think really interesting there's a lot of companies out there that are looking for good storytellers they don't know how to tell good stories but as you're saying yeah bobby it is a curated space however i the, i'm the i'm the curator right now and if you if you don't, if you aren't accepted, I have, um, you'll get a letter from me that says, if you want me to go over your portfolio, I'd be happy to do so. And so I, you know, That's we're amazing. committed to the, to the ecosystem of the artist, not just the commercial aspect of it. Like, uh, you know, I, I got good through practice, but I wasn't ready for Disney when I first picked up a pencil. That stuff takes time. Well, it's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you find the time to answer everybody's uh, submissions and everything, but that's that's Lytro, everybody, Lytro.com. So that's L-A-E-T-R-O. Um, you can go to the four creatives page on the website for the application. So that's, uh, uh, hey, easy, oh, easy does it, stop it. He sees the squirrels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like 
tell you, uh, I got a ton of squirrels in my yard, so this is this is really fun for me. <laughs> and Bobby, thank you for the invitation, man. I'm um, I'm delighted to be here. Hey, it's uh, you know, it's my pleasure. Uh, it's it's an honor to have you, sir. Oh, sketching with us. Uh, feelings mutual. And for those who want to know more about Lytro, we've put all the links from you guys and Lytro and uh, the Instagram from Dave and Bobby into the Discord chat. So oh, great. check that out and thank you. Research. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, we're and we're we're not just looking for illustrators. We're looking for designers and writers, um, right? Writers and um, motion graphics folks, Cinema 4D, 3D modelers. It's like. You know, we're looking for good skill sets in all different places. And this, uh, the company is a pretty new thing. So if people haven't heard about it yet, that's probably why. But um, it's growing quick. Sure. You know, like uh, like the the company is doing just tons of jobs all the time, and uh, finding jobs for all sorts of people. Yeah, we made. We just did some numbers yesterday, and we made three hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars for artists last year. Wow! And that so far, like that's like maybe a hundred artists. Yeah, it's probably. I think it was probably about eighty, something like that. Seventy, seventy or eighty. That artists. gives way more context, right? You know, like yeah. three hundred something thousand dollars. If it was between right, three hundred thousand right, people. <laughs> Then that's like nothing. Yeah, or yeah, or the other way that's all. It's we made three hundred and forty-seven thousand for artists, but the artist was me. Yeah, but this is just for was, eighty people, so that's that's significant. Uh, that's yeah, and we're, we're we're that was us just getting started, so we now have a sales team, and I mean, it's a it's my first rodeo as a founder in a Silicon Valley company. It's pretty it's a pretty fascinating mm -hmm. process. Well, it's great to uh, have a fellow artist, you know, in in the in the what's it called, the captain's chair. You know, yeah, somebody yeah. that's one of us. Uh, that's always a good yeah. thing. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. So we can we can keep it in integrity as 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 much as possible in the commercial world. I like how you just went for the shape there on that. I think that's a really neat approach. I'm just kind of, uh, you know what? There's there's 15 seconds in between drawings, so I just took a little time to just look at the thing and try to think of a new approach mm. or the approach that I wanted. Instead of just, because I found I was just jumping in to stuff way mm. too automatic-like. It's not the purpose of why I want to do life drawings. There's uh, someone in the YouTube chat. Um, they say, I can attest to that. They've replied to me personally with very specific uh, tips how to level up my art and told me to apply again in six months, which is really oh. sweet. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. It's true. It's true. <laughs> All right. That's nice. Yeah, stay tuned. You know, it's not like, you know, we have uh, our categories are not yes and no. They're in and out. And if you're not in quite yet, there's a chance that you could be at some point, And we're totally open to that. So oh, I'm happy to hear that. And for me, it's like, um, you know, I started my kind of uh, the main part of my career starting a studio because I needed a studio I needed a place to work right and then um, started the online school schoolism because I needed a place to learn yeah. and then got involved with magma studios because I need something to draw with <laughs> I need something to paint with that's my own and then uh, got involved with uh, Lytro because now that we know how to do all these things and we're able to do all these things, where do we get the jobs? 
right? And that's where Lytro kind of comes in here. So that it's it's possible. People don't just hear that it's possible. They they can see a roadmap of like how to get there, right? Like, um, yeah. yeah. So that's the idea. Yeah, and we're you know again we're we're just starting, and it is complicated. I'll tell you, like, it's you know we're creating something that really just hasn't been done for our industry yet. So mm -hmm. systematizing the. Uh, the ability for artists to get jobs from other sources, from sources that aren't just the studio that everybody is chasing after. Yeah, like imagine you could get jobs when you wanted to get jobs. You know, kind of like Uber, except high-end Uber. You know, you're not going for 20 bucks here. Right. Uh, you know, and that's, that's how I kind of explain it to people sometimes, where I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like Uber in the sense where you many of... Uh, the Lytro artists, they could have daytime jobs, right? And then, oh, mm -hmm. well, it's the weekend now, and, you know, um, my partner left the place to hang out with friends for the weekend or something. So what am I going to do? Uh, maybe I'll make a, you know, maybe I'll just make some money and see w what jobs are available on Lytro, and then I'll just right. do those. So in that sense, it's kind of like Uber. Uh, where you have finan like more financial freedom to make the choices that you want to make. Work, work when you want to work. Nice. Oh, shoot. Okay, got to turn on the next one. Yeah, that's, that's what we're building. Oh, this guy. This is where we yeah, started. Yeah, this is where we started, everybody. Okay. All right, are we in the 10-minute ones or five-minute ones? Uh, these are 10 minutes now. So this is the oh. second 10-minute sketch wow nice okay okay uh, i'm gonna try something totally different yeah me probably too. crash and burn but that's all right There's a, an idea on Slido for the next 90 Mac porcupines. Oh. Porcupines. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it could be cute. Well, I have the next one. I just haven't set it up. Get, get ready, everybody, because I already got the images. I can't show you right now, but um, it's going to be uh, 70s women's fashion. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, the, the images that I got, I was like, holy smokes, this is so inspiring. So freaking inspiring. Yeah, it's going to be all, it's going to be such a, not just, um, not just a life drawing class for the next one, but also almost like a research assignment. You know, you're going to learn so much from doing the next uh, 90 minute art challenge uh, life drawing class because you'll learn all about the kinds of clothes people wore back in the 70s and even if you were born or you lived in the 70s many times time changes things and you forget mm -hmm. yeah so that one's going to be fun it's going to be really fun. What's your favorite decade? What's mine? Yeah. You know, um, uh, I, I, I'll answer this sort of the same, the same way. My, my, I've got a 21-year-old uh, daughter now. Um, and as she was growing up, I would look at her every once in a while and go, wow, you're, you're 11 now? God, can I... Can I tell you what my favorite age of you was? And she'd be all like, huh, what? And I'd be like, right now. Oh, that's great. So, so right I now. Just, yeah, so you know, I don't know. I. Okay, let me change the question. So it's a little yeah, I don't, easier I don't mean to for you to- sabotage your question. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. 
say I go, hey, Dave, I got this magic bubble to take us back into any point in time that you like. Would you like to just stay here and not use it? Or would you like to go somewhere to one of your f favorite decades? That's a cool question. All right. Uh, let's see, where would I go? Did, uh, am I alive in that decade or is it, can it be before my time? I, we got time. You could answer both situations. All right. So, yeah, the eighties were, were pretty sweet. I mean, the music in the eighties, ridiculously good. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I think that would, I probably do if I, if I could go back eighties, probably. That's a good one. Yeah, you know, you? now nowadays I get 90s and 80s confused. Like a lot of times I think something happened in the 90s or I think something happened in the 80s because I thought it was so long ago, but it's actually not that long ago it's in the 90s. Are you one of the people where it's like you got your dates straight? Like, oh, yeah, first time I did that was in 1984. And, you know, I was with Sally and Fred and... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, not, not, not really, no. I'm just like, I kind of like just going where I'm at, really. I don't know. No, but like you, you're not good at remembering dates like me, I, or you remember dates and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm not great at it. I mean, <laughs> like, I, 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 I wouldn't be like, yeah, my first concert was Kansas, and it was, you know, at April 5th or something like that. Hey, know, that's not, a good question actually what was your first concert yeah i think i think it was kansas <laughs> i think it was kansas i was in i was in high school um i think also i went to see the kinks which was pretty awesome you know like and so like, i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna say a stupid question but so kansas is the band yeah oh okay yeah no, I didn't go to Kansas. I went to see the band Kansas. Okay. Carry on my wayward son. In fact, they sound exactly like that. That was me, not the radio, everybody. <laughs> Next question. Were you ever part of a band? I feel um, like maybe you were. Maybe it's the hair. That makes yeah, I, you know, I, I, I've never been part of one, but I secretly play the harmonica when nobody's looking. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I can't sing. Um, I learn way slower musical instruments than everybody else. So never did it. I, 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 yeah, I love, I love music and the whole idea of musicians. One of the things I really love to do is go draw when people are playing music. Like that's really fun for me. Mm. Bring my sketchbook out and Oh, totally. That totally, uh, you know, mixes so well. And I also am appreciating um, the digital game when you're out and about. You know, like I can do a painting at the Getty on my iPad and uh, I don't get accosted by the the, you know, guards there who are telling me that I got to put my watercolors away or whatever, you know? Yeah. I really love the, the, the opportunity to take, um, to do paintings at museums using these new tools. There's a question on Slido. It, this is a, uh, a problem they're facing from anonymous if someone is painting with a complementary color but they have multiple colored objects in the scene how do we solve this thank you so much do you want to go first or you want to go first <laughs> how do you solve for the light um i could give an easy solution right off the bat you know, uh, just thinking about maybe if the person, uh, you know, okay, so there's definitely other ways that I would do this, but this is a very simple hack 
not perfect. Just paint it however you're going to paint it and then put a color layer over top and start turning down the opacity until it looks good. <laughs> the color layer will harmonize, harmonize all your colors. Um, but if you're like dead set on just using a, a complementary color scheme and you do not want to touch any other hues, then that's different. You know, I, I, I have become a better painter now that I paint digitally. And I think part mm -hmm. of it is because you can do the things that you're talking about there, Bobby. Like, um, we, for the first time in centuries, have the ability to paint differently than we ever have before, right? We're not any longer using uh, just pigment on, on a surface. We have the ability to, um, to use layers and non-destructive abilities and, and, and things that you can really test your painting. So, you know, if you need to do a complementary or a tertiary or a, you know, some kind of triangle in your, in your creation, um, the ability exists for you to practice and test it. And so, you know, use those layers, use those things and, and figure out what the edges are of your, of your tools so that you can um, effectively use them. You know, like that color theory that you're talking about can be really complex, but it can be very simplified by what Bobby was just talking about. Yeah, it's a pretty much a hack. You know, you're not going to have hue shifts or anything, but um, it will at least give you a sense and at least give you some sort of way to start to understand. Yeah. Oh, I was having a good time on that last one. I know. So many of these, I'm like, I want to go back to these. The last one I was just doing with a square pencil brush the whole entire time. Nice. And I was like, pretty difficult actually to get everything down. There's a, another question from Slido from Clara is, do you have a favorite artist? But I was thinking to spice it up with the time travel thing. If you have the ability to time travel oh. and you could visit one special artist that you think like, I want to meet that person one day, who would it be? As they're working, as they're exactly. working, right? <laughs> right. 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 Oh, oh my cool. God. I would love to see, uh, you said Leonardo? Yeah, I, I mean, that, for me, that's like Leonardo is my super quick answer. What would he be working on if you could choose like any time uh, to know, visit him? Like uh, a painting or an invention? Yeah, probably he'd be working in his sketchbook on the things that help you fly. Yeah, so that's what you'd want to kind of check out. Yeah. This like Gandalf looking dude. <laughs> working on totally. flying machines that is and, so and, awesome and i heard stories of him that like people would come out of their houses when he would walk down the street because he was like graceful and put together and you know he was just like you know he was just like a incredible human specimen wow he floated as he's walking it seems <laughs> interesting yeah, what about you? Um, there's so many. Uh, there's so many. So if I could name a couple. You know, when, um, when Michelangelo was painting the part of the Sistine Chapel where mm -hmm. they're, they're about to touch fingers, you know, and like the one side, the human side, had that that ancient Easter egg of like, this is actually your brain, right? right. And that shape. Right. I wonder if there was any part where like he th thought of that. Like, I would love to be there seeing him think of that and just go, mm -hmm. yeah, nobody's going to know what the hell this is. Cause, um, uh, taking apart cadavers is like, it's illegal, but I will put the symbol in here 
whether it's for me or for the generations hundreds of years from now mm. you know mm. that is so so cool Or the one where it's like Donatello, uh, you know, like all of a sudden nobody knows how to sculpt like this anymore since, since the Greeks and the Romans and stuff. And mm. how did he make that Donatello statue or that, that David statue, you know, with the hat mm. on and, and just looked so anatomically sound and so lifelike and all that stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where did he get mm. that knowledge from? I think that I'd definitely go Renaissance because holy cow, those guys, mm -hmm. there was a lot of, uh, of in, in Venice, in the Renaissance, there was a lot of amazing stuff going on there. Mm. Yeah, or um, I don't know the artist, but I would love to see the hieroglyphs get painted in the, you know, in the ancient uh, Egyptian buildings. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? That'd be super cool. Yeah, I'd like to understand some of that. Like, what are you guys talking about here? Here's another one that totally I think about occasionally. Uh, the the famous uh, cave paintings in France, right in that, that cave. Scow and Altamira, yeah. Well. W when they did um, whatever carbon dating or whatever they do with the crystals that were growing over top of the paintings mm. in that cave, mm. the oldest painting was 3,000 years old, like before the newest painting in there. Right. Right? And it's like, what was going on? Because like in 3,000 years, right. how far have we come? You know, yet those paintings in that cave, they're the same. They're the same style, generally, like, compared right, to what yeah, we've was, gone through. I was stunned by that also. Like, these paintings, th like, these two paintings are 3,000 years apart, and they're, they're, they seem like they're done by the same artist. I mean, there's a crazy fiction for you. How about some time travel <laughs> that just got, you know, stuck? Well, here's the other thing. Uh, this is a Bobby fact. This is just some shit I heard. You probably need to verify it. But what I heard was um, in recent years, it was discovered that if you went in with a, if you went in with more of like a torch kind of a light source mm -hmm. instead of like big lights, as you move through, um, the paintings would move because shadows would catch and then they would start to animate or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. That would be amazing. I think that's just a stupid... Somebody's pulling my chain. <laughs> I don't know. There's another place called... Um, what's it called? Like Go Gobelli Tepe? Gobeki, Gobeki Temp Temp Templi? You heard of that place? It's like 12,000 years old. I... Uh, I and it's like it's yeah. in Turkey and it's like um, it's a series of underground caves that go back 12,000 years. Oh. I'm pretty sure I have heard of that. Cause I'm always, people are always sending me this, those kind of things because I'm always interested. Yeah. Anyhow. There's our long, long answer to that one. There's a question for uh, Dave from Slido. Um, you mentioned uh, Lightro also hires designers. Does it also mean graphic designers, interface artists, experienced visual artist included yeah yes it does we're we're looking for we're looking for folks who can help companies with what's called their creative meaning that 
Maybe they need an ad made, or maybe they need, uh, you know, uh, 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 a video done. And um, and what we're finding is that uh, there's a lot of companies out there that need to tell their story, and they just don't know how to. And so instead of, you know, trying to get into the studios all the time, maybe there's a place for artists to do good story work for companies that need stories to be told. And so that's, you know, designers and writers and um, all kinds of, of skill sets that can help. Um, you know, we just, we did one for this company called Certain and they were a background check company. And so we did some work for them to help them flesh out their ideas about how to do back, you know, like what's their mojo. And all the other companies that do background checks, they're all like the guardian at the gate and the knight and all that. And these guys were like, well, could we do something different? And so if you look up certain S uh, C E R T N, we did a bunch of character design for them and they loved it. They flipped out. They're crazy successful now, and they just acquired for, I don't know, like $130 million another company. Oh, wow. Um, because they're, you know, they're, they're different than anybody else on the market. And so we do similar things that you might do in a story session. Like, what's the story? Who's the antagonist, protagonist? What's the thesis, synthesis, antithesis? Antip antithesis? Like, how, do, uh, how does your company as a character in the world differentiate itself from other companies who are also characters in the world and so uh that's you know it's a really fun design challenge that um that happens uh with companies that it's not just the studio that that needs that kind of work and so i think that that to me is really exciting you know the studios are consolidating and getting less and less you know accessible and there's other places for us to get work oh, this is fun <laughs> yeah I like hey, this guy it's kind of like caught the uh, photographer looking at him what are you doing yeah so you know everybody uh if you're looking for work and things like that, that's that's why Lytro exists. Uh, it's a book market. Follow them on Instagram. All that good stuff. Yeah. And you could check out some of my stuff at Dave Z. Oh, it's on the bottom of the screen actually, or it's right beside Dave's name, uh, Dave's awesome. Instagram handle. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that could probably lead them to Lytro as well. I think it's in your bio. There's a question on Slido. I think it's uh, because of uh, what we talked about before uh, from Anonymous. What do you think about the life and work from Van Gogh? Mm. Oh. <laughs> the, the, oh, Van Gogh. Oh. No. Uh, oh. Yeah. Do, do you mind if I chime in on Go that one? Go for it. Um, yeah. So I, I, like I'm reading this art spirit and it's beautiful because he talks about like um, every stroke is alive. Every stroke has um, has your life in it and so um, when you are uh, you know when you're in doubt or um, or you know ch challenged or like anxious or scared like all of that stuff goes into that goes into every stroke these tools we have are apt transmitters of a human consciousness and um, and so I think about that when I think about Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, um, you know, here's a guy who was incredibly passionate. We're super clear about that. Like 
he uh, operated at a level of intensity. He had a period of 90 days where he made 120 paintings and they're magnificent, like tubes of paint on there, you know? Um, but he was operating at a level of kind of stress and intensity that is normal for us now, you know? Like, like he, you know, he saw incredible uh, connections. You know, there, there's, I just read an article where um, uh, science had come up with a, an idea about fluid dynamics but they didn't know how to visualize it. They had the math for it, but they didn't have the visualization of it. But Van Gogh did. Starry Starry Night is a, um, uh, an, apt, a, an apt example of the visualization of fluid dynamics. And he was seeing that. And so then, you know, nobody really appreciated it because maybe people weren't resonating at that same level of intensity that he was. And so now you go 120 years later and I go to see a Van Gogh painting at the Getty and I'm driving down the freeway at 80 miles an hour and people going the other way are going 80 miles an hour. We're passing each other at 160. I'm reaching in the back seat to grab some stuff out of my bag. I'm chewing on a sandwich that I made, fiddling with the radio and talking to a friend of mine on the phone. It's like my baseline level of intensity is the same as Van Gogh's was when he was making this art. And so then I go to the Getty and I look at his pieces and I go, oh, he gets me. You know, like mm -hmm. that, the irises, that one single iris in a field of others is like me alone trying to make my art, you know, in a field of people who are judging and standing by. And, you know, I don't know. I, so I, like, I appreciate the intensity and I, 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 I'm a big fan of his. Well, that's, I, my, that's my thesis on Van Gogh. <laughs> First time I saw a Van Gogh, Van Gogh painting. Uh, now I'm so like conscious, self-conscious of like how I pronounce it. Cause I know me too. <laughs> I have I'm Patricia Van Gogh here. <laughs> yeah, Van Gogh. But uh, yeah, the first time I saw Van, Van Gogh painting <laughs> I was in high school and that was the artist that my mom was scared about she's oh, like okay, okay you're gonna be an artist you know don't go crazy you can get crazy if you become an artist you could chop your ear off you know all these like <laughs> all these things um and then I saw the painting and I was like meh looks nice all the I don't brown know. Paintings. it's all right you know and then and then that was it right that was high school then fast forward now i'm an artist uh professionally and now i'm in amsterdam at the van gogh museum oh my god there's not just one van gogh painting there's tons of them and that was an experience, seeing the collection of them together. People talk about color vibration and stuff like that. Um, that, I don't even know if that would be considered color vibration. The stuff was just vibrating, like, insanely, you know? Um, uh, yeah, and so that's when I really got it. When I saw the collection together, not only how the things look, but you can really feel the person. You can really, you can, it's like a window into this very kind of sad person's life. Yeah. And that has gigantic appeal for me. It had so much appeal because it was so like, it was so raw and open and just like you're staring into the most private kind of moments of this person's mm -hmm. life kind of thing. That's, that's how it felt, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. during those times, like you see this, just a sad looking crab on a plate and you know, it's all green all over the place and you're like, the damn. Potato eaters. I know, yeah. Uh, so right, there, there's all those brown paintings that he did that are just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love Van Gogh, uh, Van Gogh for that reason. Um, I just appreciate 
the person's life and and the body of work together is it was really an experience i didn't plan on experiencing mm, right i remember i was at the van gogh museum in amsterdam and i was so intently looking at a painting and i've been traveling for 10 days had a big beard and looked kind of ratty and i would walk and for like 45 minutes i walked back and forth like i got up close uh-huh. then i'd walk back and i go how does he do this right like there's light dappling on the on the um on a field of ivy underneath these trees you know like light coming through the trees dappling on ivy i was just like flabbergasted and um and i was going back and forth and back and forth and until i bumped into a guard who was standing <laughs> behind like standing behind me and then i looked over my shoulder and there's one guy there and there's two guys on the other side and they were like it's time for you to move on sir <laughs> But I paid my ticket. <laughs> yeah, they're like, you are too interested in this painting. Yeah, you look like you're going to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. W- what did you, did you ever see the uh, Mona Lisa in person? And if so, what were your impressions? Yeah, you know, I, I had a chance to work for Disney in Paris, which was just magic. Uh, And the Louvre Museum was open until 10 o'clock on Mondays. And so I would get off of work on Monday and, you know, I'd get off at like, I don't know, seven or eight at night and be exhausted. But if I could just stay on the Metro, I would end up at the Louvre. And so every Monday night I'd go to the Louvre and I'd go to the Danone, section which is where they had all the sculptures and I would draw the sculptures um, but uh, yeah I mean the Mona Lisa is the most famous but there I don't know if you guys have a good museum in your town I go to the Getty here in LA probably well I did before the pandemic but I, before the pandemic I would go twice a month just to just to see my friends and teachers and study highly recommend it if you have a good museum that's that's where all your teachers are so then your but then your first impressions when you saw the mona lisa which oh yeah you know it's pretty epic because you don't get to see it right away you have to climb over people yeah there's a big crowd close to it you know and so uh so yeah it's um wow look at the color of that guy love it right so good all right screw it i'll try to do some color here let's go all right i'm i'm gonna give you a couple of minutes here because i've got a 10 30 uh, meeting with Lytro. Oh, okay so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna, gonna have, have to, to bounce jump off but i'll just do a i'll do a quick okay before you go dave um there's someone on discord who mentioned that your profile on instagram is brilliant and I oh. saw it as a bunny. <laughs> right? Wait, oh, my, my picture? Yeah, your profile yeah, my picture. picture. <laughs> my, my profile picture is my rabbit, Rory, who runs through, he has the run of the studio. So if you come to our drawing classes, he's kind of, he's kind of the star. I have a 10-year-old bunny that just runs around my studio. And he was uh, sick earlier this summer, and I took him to the vet, and the vet's like, your bunny's 10? I've never met a 10-year-old bunny. Uh, so it's so well loved. Do, yeah, he's totally loved. He gets to do what he wants. He's also ornery as hell. Like, all the dogs stay away from him. He's just <laughs> like, he kind of just does what he wants. So, you know, while he's around, I'm honoring my, my buddy Rory. That's, oh, great. that's a lovely story. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Julia, <laughs> for the question. Yeah, co- you come to our drawing sessions, and you can find it on our Instagram on the um, on the link tree. There's a there's a link there, or you can send me an email at Dave at Litro. You just send me an email, um, Litro.com, and uh, I'll send you a link. If you'd like to go to our drawing class, I'll send you a link for it, um, and you'll see when you go. Uh, Rory running around the room. It's pretty, it's pretty cute. 
and then you'll hear him chewing on my papers every once in a while. <laughs> All right. All right, Bobby, I think I'm going to have to go. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's great having you. Uh, this is our last pose, everybody. But uh, big shouts out to Dave for honoring us with his presence. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, great. The, the honor is mine, Bobby. I really I appreciate what you do in the world, the, the schoolism and Lightbox and how you take care of your artists. And it's just, it's an honor to play with you. And so thank you for all you do for, your, for, for our community. I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, we and appreciate you, Dave. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. All right, guys. All right, enjoy the drawing. Have a great day, everybody. All right. All right, everybody. So we are going to continue. And uh, last drawing, last drawing. Stay there. Stay in it with me. Almost there. Dave was great, huh, Patricia? Yeah, Dave was nice. It was really nice good guy. to hear. And it was really heartfelt story about the bunny. <laughs> Did not uh, expect that. Uh, and uh, um, I, I had a trouble pronunciation uh, of uh, Van Gogh, or that's like uh -huh. how. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I will just do my Dutch <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> Vincent van Gogh, yeah. Van Gogh, got it. Now I'm fluent in Dutch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, do, do you want to um, ask some uh, questions from Slido? Or oh, yeah, yeah, them? sure. Let's try yeah. to get through as many as we can. OK. Uh, there's one from Anonymous. Uh, I'm a business student, not really pursuing art related. Uh, and he's still at school, and he has a hard time creating personal work and studying any tips uh well i don't know if you're the same as me but um what worked for me is just getting up earlier you know i get up five o'clock four thirty and you'll have plenty of time <laughs> to do your own thing <laughs> for a bunch of hours honestly it's 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 a bit of a struggle you know to kind of um arrange your life like that and get ready for that getting up in the you know while it's still dark outside but um extremely rewarding so rewarding if you can get into it you do the opposite right patricia <laughs> you sleep at like five in the morning i think oh yeah i i, I do i, I have used to do strange that. schedules but uh Depending. I know that schedule too. That schedule is a interesting <laughs> schedule too. Anything else? Or I think we're good at this point. I'm looking through. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is maybe more of a suggestion than a question. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, from uh, Melody, uh, I was wondering if it's, it's possible that there can be a workshop or workout or a course uh, about 2D animation character sheets. i never seen any course on that process. I've heard of character Bible, but I'm not sure if it's related to 2D animation as well. Oh, well, 2D Bible. Um, so a Bible is generally what we would say uh, is for pitching a lot of times. You know, this contains pretty much the story of your world, the characters, why it's interesting. Uh, then character turnarounds, a model sheet, that's more for when you're in production so that everybody's on the same page because you're dealing with so many artists that it can be very easy to all of a sudden one person's drawing the character one way and another person is drawing the character in another, you know, a totally different way. That's the big difference. Um, 
but I want to say, I feel like there's some course on schoolism with turnarounds or something. Uh, generally, generally, that kind of stuff is also called um, the, like a packet, creating a packet. Anyways, what did I answer the question? <laughs> I was like yeah, trying to concentrate yeah. on drawing at the same time. Okay, cool. They they've posted a picture with it, uh, and you see like a sheet with one character who is more, you know, fully in in picture, and other ones that are having like these emotions and uh, a prop they oh. toy with. So it's it's just I think, uh, yeah, a character sheet like that. Yeah, I despise char doing character sheets. <laughs> you do? Why? Because, <laughs> like, my favorite part is reading the script and then going, oh, okay, I got an idea what this character should look like. And then once I got that character down, right, and I have the idea, then I feel like I'm done. Like, somebody else could you know, take care of, like, turn around somebody that's really passionate about it and uh, somebody that's, like, used to that kind of stuff and, you know, does that stuff all the time. Maybe they could give it to somebody like that. My thing has always been, like, to come up with iconic characters for whatever uh, story I'm working on. So for you, it's more the exploring and... Just, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once you once I come up with that image, that design, then I feel like my job is done, and generally other people take over at that point. I've never, I maybe did one turnaround in the last what twenty years. Like I could do them, just like I could draw people, but I just don't want to. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Uh, shoot, I got all caught up in talking about model stuff. Okay, here we go. I think that looks pretty good for it's the last five minute pose, everybody. So since it's the last one, maybe I could just paint on it a little bit more um, if there's any other questions or anything. Uh, we are through the questions right now, just letting you know. Oh, great. There's no anyone popping up. With uh, the artist and time travel, I would totally go with Dave. <laughs> 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 Visiting Leonardo in his workshop somewhere. That that would be something. your choice as well. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there's... Oh, you know what would be another good one? There's like a whole documentary about this um, painting that people assume is a Leonardo da Vinci painting, right? And the documentary was to authenticate the painting because it's like um, they found it more in recent years than like, you know, decades ago. Uh yeah, and so that painting, it was like, when they looked through it, it, like, they start analyzing it, they're like, this is on vellum, but then it's with, like, I think pastels or something, and that's, if anybody's ever tried to do pastels on vellum, like, that just sounds like a really bad idea, because you won't be able to keep the pigment on the page, it'll be very difficult, but that's how this thing was done, and then people didn't understand how it was done. So that might be a good one, too, to see if he was actually the person that painted that thing. And if so, how did he do it? Someone is asking, was it fake or fortune? Was it right. So that's the thing. Like, is, is this a forgery or is this like a real thing? And that's what mm -hmm. the, the documentary was all about. It definitely pointed to that, yes, this is a Leonardo da Vinci newly discovered piece of art um 
and you know they go through why and everything so you can check it out oh that's cool right that's really interesting there's another one that was kind of similar where it was um they're tr trying to authenticate a jackson pollock like abstract splatters everywhere like a painting like that and there's a whole documentary on it you know and then in the end no i shouldn't spoil it <laughs> Never mind. it's a good documentary though all right squirrel time was super fun i hope everybody had a great time this little guy also looks like he's having a good time uh, I want to thank everybody that tuned in, everybody that participates every week. Post your stuff with the hashtag 90 Minute Art Challenge, and I'll be sure to see it and give it a like and whatever else. Or you could tag me, even easier. But with the hashtag, then we could all see each other's drawings and sketches and everything. Um, also, a huge thanks to Patricia, the mods, uh, and Dave. And Dave had to go, but uh, Z Dave Zabos sorry, Dave Zaboski, awesome, right? That was a really great time. Hope to have you again, back again one day, Dave, uh, one day soon. All right, so tune in next week. We're going to be tackling uh, 70s women's fashion. And uh, for people that like to draw people, people that are interested in costumes, this is a really great one. This is a really great one. So I'll see you all there. Um, for all Schoolism subscribers, I want to let you know that this week there is going to be a webinar on Friday. If you, if you uh, get a Schoolism subscription by today, by today, then tomorrow you will receive an email. All Schoolism subscribers will receive an email on and tomorrow is the third, if anybody's watching this in the past or whatever, in the future, I should say. Um, if you subscribe by the second, then you'll get uh, the email to attend Sam Nielsen's The Magic of Contrast, Designing Compositions with Sam Nielsen from uh, 10 a.m. to uh, 1, 2, 3, 2 <laughs> p.m. <laughs> or sorry. 10 a.m. to uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time, and then 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'm in Eastern time, so it took me a little longer to convert things. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you all next time, next week.